Well, hi there, class, and welcome back to Let's Play Devil Summoner Raido Kuzinoha vs. the Soulless Army. We're moving into Chapter 2, and I brought along a friend. Hi. This is Spatware. You may remember him from uh, other videos. No, they're not going to remember me from other videos. Of course they it will. Didn't you were in that Champions Online video. Shh. <laughs> okay, maybe you weren't. This guy is chill. Yeah, he's Narumi. He's the best dude in the game. He's, uh... And now... Yeah, here we got the dame. That's a dame. She's definitely a dame. I wouldn't call her a floozy, though. Nah, skirt's way too long for floozy. I can't see her knees, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so Tay doesn't like to be called Tay for some inextricable reason, because she's got, like, a fake identity. But, of course, Narumi Which one's knows. the real one? Um, I don't know, Kichi Jojo, the one she just said in pink. So Tay's the fake one. Tay is her, is her, I don't know, maybe Tay is her real name? I can't remember. Anyway, episode two of the Red Cape. <laughs> this is when the episode actually begins. We're introduced there to, she's a reporter lady. She's annoying. All right. I don't think this guy understands how ties and collars work. Is you know, he's 1920s style. He also seems to think that anyone who comes in is not really a client. Like, he didn't have any patience for the girl at the beginning who fell off the bridge, either. That's how you make it as a detective. Yeah. Well, he's, you he's, give a he's, shit, you put out the aura of mystery, and they're like, ooh, solve my crimes. He's very successful. So here you have an option. Oh, so we are... We are the screen. We are looking at them. Yes. All right. I decided to, you know, side with Narumi. You can see his little shit-eating grin there. What's the caper? Always makes me laugh. I wonder how long it always took those ladies to get that one curl of hair by their ear. I figure maybe there was a kit that they'd had. Okay, the red so, cape. Yes, the red cape is apparently one figure, even though we've run into lots of people wearing red capes. All right, that's better than what I thought it was. I thought it was a it was a dirty euphemism. No, not this I time. So yeah, the red cape is um, a monster. We think is a guy who mm. turned into a monster because of the like demon the mafia. So naturally, the cat is there to remind you of things because that's what cats do. You could tell I've watched a lot of anime when a talking cat doesn't even make me flinch. <laughs> yeah, Just, a, whatever. Yeah, wise, I'd be disappointed if the cat didn't talk. <laughs> wise cracking cat. Everything talks in this game. One of the monsters in the beginning, you, you may not have seen this, but he's a little gremlin in a floating pot. And when he gets really hurt, he turns upside down. Oh, well, yeah. Like urn pot or cooking pot? Like an urn. It's always the urn pot. Why can't it be the cooking pot once? I want to see a little monster ride around a saucepan. Pretty funny. I'm going right. to name him Linguine. So, uh, you know, as soon as money comes into it, Narumi's interested. He's got to feed his tie habit. Yeah. He looks like a guy who needs a lot of ties and vests. The, you know, like hair grease pomade or something? I don't like his shoulders, though. Something wrong. Well, his lower arms appear to be missing. So Kiyoshi is... Um, the uncle, or the brother, of the richest guy in the area, who uh, is, I think, he's either dead or he's super sick, I can't remember. And his daughter's been kidnapped, and we've been trying to... Actually, no, we saved her already. But anyway, stuff's going on. Mystery solved. <laughs> but, I'm glad uh, I got the recap. I should definitely watch all those videos before the next episode. Well, you know... I feel professional. There's a little recap... I'm just going to pull up the recap here. You can go to the case files right, cool. every once in a while, and that tells you. Then you go through your really long, involved menu. And there we go. So that just tells us uh, about the first part. Schoolgirl, the special guards. On high. Yeah. So there you go. So Kyoshi, we thought, was after the inheritance, and then he turned into a monster before we could question him. Right. Yeah. So Doesn't mean he's still not after the inheritance. Sometimes monsters need that paper, too. Yeah, I mean, as far as we know. 
There we go. Just gonna do a little quick save. I don't know why I didn't cut this out. Cut out all the other save screens. Whatever. It's part of the authentic experience. Let's get out of here. You want to get behind the curtain? <laughs> all right. Now we're gonna go out into graphical glitch land. Yes. <laughs> There are a few of them because I'm emulating this and it's imperfect. Yeah. And no one gives a shit <laughs> that there's a giant two-headed cat with your other little black cat. Oh, no one can see him. That's dramatic. Yeah, that guy is, uh... I like, I like this zombie, this, uh... Not the zombie, the monster, Epondatera. Just because he's a crazy one-legged serial. I recognize that. Sorry, what was that? So that's the combat in the game. It's an action mm. RPG. Right, right. You control each slash of the sword. Popped up in action RPGs, but it was quick. You got in it, you got out of it. Mm -hmm. Elegantly. Yes! Yeah, old dude at the store. And uh, if we go into the basement of this store, this guy doesn't like talking to us. He's cranky. He looks a lot more badass from a distance. <laughs> So it's the beginning of a new chapter, which means that there are a bunch of new items. You should always check the item store at the beginning of a new chapter. I'm just right, loading right. up on so, bullets here. I didn't see you use a gun. I don't use it every fight, but these bullets each have a different element. Uh, on top of the normal bullets that you can see at the top. The normal bullets just do regular damage. Some enemies are immune. And these um, elemental bullets allow you to do stunning damage to an enemy if they're weak to that element. Yeah. Which is very useful for catching uh, the enemies. That Ox Bazaar, the second one down, is an aphrodisiac. We need more rocks from intestines. I think so. You know, you, know, you gotta make sure that uh, you are properly digesting all of your rummaging. Mm -hmm. your, your roughage, as it were. So this stuff, I'm trying to decide whether or not to buy it, but then I eventually decide to pick some up. Because I have to do some grinding a little later on. Yeah, yeah. Which is all cut out, so don't worry about that. You know, for some reason, it never occurred to me in RPGs to get the plus encounter things to help grind. Yeah, it turned it backfired a little bit, but uh, it did it did end up helping me upgrade. Anyway, so we go into the basement, and there's a mad scientist. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with this. <laughs> and obviously, his name is Victor. You know, it's a nod to a certain uh, literary mad scientist. I'm not sure who it could be? You can't. I couldn't tell you. I like all the open electricity. Yeah, well, you know, it's the 20s. Oh, oh. all right, I see. Yeah, so you, you can jam monsters together, basically, to make new monsters. And uh, we're jamming Orthrus, the giant two-headed cat, together with um, little guy who looks like 2D from the gorillas to make a girl. Moshvu. I kind of feel like you should be the guy with Wikipedia up talking about all these things. <laughs> you can if you want to. All I know is that Moshvu flies with her hair. Oh, oh. And there we go, they're done in the cage. I used one of these in Strange Journey for a long ass time. Yeah, they're really useful. Actually, um, you're gonna see in the third episode, well, in like five episodes for the people watching, there's a boss fight where I use her exclusively. Hmm. And it's very useful. Anyway, so I've gone back and I've bought Orthrus again because I love Orthrus and he's my best pyro right now. Right. So each order of demons has its own special ability that you can only use outside of combat. Okay, so this is Sacrifice Fusion. You sacrifice one demon to make another demon stronger. You can see our luck is going up for Moshevu. And to do that, we're sacrificing we Agathium. Okay. Sorry? Just... Oh, oh, that's not appropriate. <laughs> There's a little dude, that's the guy in the pot, uh, the urn I was telling you about. Yeah. Looks more like a skull. Or is it a skull patterned urn? Uh, it's just like a regular urn pattern with a little blue guy in it. Sort of, you know, generic ancient urn. And then the bird lady ate her. It. Him. It was delicious, whatever it was. Because like she... escargot. Hmm. Yeah, I got a little fork to dig out all the bits out of the urn. Yeah, that's that's always the best part. Remember in, in Japan, I had to eat um, a sea slug, I think it was. And it was, like, stuck in a giant shell and had to mm. pull the whole thing out with this miniature specialized curved fork. 
that they had yeah. specifically just for eating this kind of a thing. I like how you said you had to eat it. I had to. It was at an office party. Mm, yeah, you did have to. Exactly. I have no choice. All right, so this is you the world map. It. We're currently in Tsukudocho. And that the, is not the, the world. world. Well, it's the world according to Japan. City. City map. So these people, they talk about rumors about whatever's going on, and that guy was just talking about the red cap. Right. And we're going to take standard the, the streetcar over to the new area that we can access, Ginzacho. Which is right there. So it's you really see, fast streetcar. Yeah, what, what time era is it supposed to be in? It's in the 20s. And actually, the era that it's in is a big part of the story. Because this time, this year, never existed. But that's a spoiler, so I won't tell you any more about it. Shit. <laughs> Cut. We need to do another take. Too late. So this is the soda shop. I decided not to go in there. I don't know why. It was a dumb decision. Should have gone in first. But uh, I am pretty thirsty. Yeah, I decided to go into the city and wander around first, but... Let's go back into graphical glitch land. It's a new graphical glitch land. There you go. Oh, Skybox. There we go. Nice. It's just real foggy, alright? Yeah, it's very foggy, and the fog is very razor edged. No one over the height of 10 feet is allowed to walk around. I'm in trouble. Well, you gotta be careful. Right, so. Wait, um, the re what I'm doing here is I'm pulling out Raiju, who's a Volt Order Demon, because their ability is in spec. You can see I'm all in slow motion, because the emulator cannot handle this many things going on at once. All those particles. Yeah, so Raiju is uh, a electric demon tiger. Looked like a puppy. Oh, something like that. I don't know what he is. You've got a fucking animal. Yeah. And so he tries to find any hidden items, and he doesn't find any. That's why he goes, he makes that sad growling noise. And obviously there's nothing on the map because we haven't discovered it yet, and we're going to run in slow motion off the main... <laughs> <laughs> if you get in front of the cars and the street cars in this area, they actually stop. How polite. Yeah, I mean, all the random people, they just uh, walk right through you. Now this is a little glitched out because there is a hidden item in this area. But it didn't show up. Were you not close enough? I'm not sure, but I, I went back and got it later. And here, uh, this area has a lot of different exits. This takes us up to an overpass, and I decide not to go up there after this fight. More spoilers. <laughs> now there are two ways you can use your sword. There I'm doing a, a thrust. That does more damage. And this is just the regular attack. It's a combo. Then there's a thrust. Right. Right now my demon's confused because Pyrojack confuses people, so I have to be careful because he died there. Actually, he didn't die. He just walked away. He just left. He's done. He's done. Yeah. You have to be careful because sometimes if your demon gets confused, they will hurt you. They'll come right. Or just leave, apparently. Yep. He just walked off. So Moshu wasn't a great idea there, but I'm working on getting her loyalty to max out. The more loyalty you have, the more demons you can carry around. Right, right. Just one of the many things you have to manage in the game. Now Is loyalty see. flexing, dude? They flex is harder and harder? Yes, exactly. And when they're fully loyal, they hold a star. And so ripped. Yeah. Just shows how powerful they are. They can hold up the stars! Yeah, so I decided, ah, I'm not going to go to the overpass. There are a number of hidden it's items. In there. You don't want to go there. Yeah, exactly. It's, it could lose my head. So what I'm doing now is I'm I'm looking furiously for a homeless person. And this is going to go on for a little bit. Any homeless person will do. There's a specific if you just one. Just twenty now, then I'm sure someone will pop up. Yeah. Shiny things are items, and I got a Lou incense, and um, that you can use to permanently increase your luck. <laughs> What a lucky find. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well done, sir. Yeah, I got a bunch of those. <laughs> That's not going to stop me time soon. Do you have Punipedia open? Nope. <laughs> Couldn't get Wikipedia, but he's got a list of puns. For every conceivable situation. Yeah, the map is 
it's pretty good, but it's it's kind of annoying because it gets the the cameras fixed. So sometimes and the looks... map doesn't really. <laughs> oh, you can't catch them. Uh, not at the moment. I actually I might catch one here because this is one of my favorite demons. Actually, I'm saying oh, actually a lot. Actually, right. yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna try and figure out what they're weak against by reloading my gun with magic bullets. And they're weak against fire, so that's convenient. I gotta go up to him when he's weak, and then start mashing the circle button. But he died. Thanks, Ipon Datura. Is this in the SMT timeline, or is it separate? I'm not sure, honestly. I do not know. I think it's supposed to be in it. Um, actually, it is in it, because in Persona 4, they refer to this character. And I have to pull out Alp, because Alp is a pagan demon, and pagans can read minds. But this guy doesn't have mind reading, so I have to get someone else. Figure Orthrus, maybe. Pyro demons can set people on fire. There we go. Well, this will fucking solve the problem. That's how you detect. <laughs> he got super pumped. Yeah, that's what you do. You set them on fire, and then they're really excited because they're on fire. All right, leg land. Now, you may not have noticed in the bottom right there. I guess we'll talk about it later. But we got some more Mokoys. There we go. We're going to go for it. There we go! Uh, oh shit! Uh, yeah! <laughs> Whoa! I like, like Mokoi because he's, he's a very well-spoken monster. Well-spoken and also wants you in a box of heat with him. He's a badass. There we go. Ippon Dathura's max out his loyalty. This music and this dude, that that's not matching. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's nuts. He's a one-legged serial okay killer. What just happened? <laughs> then I'm just choosing who default comes out in the middle of a battle, and it's going to be Moshe because I need to get her loyalty up. People who are standing still, you can talk to. Social commentary. social commentary from decades ago. Yeah. That old dude's awesome. Yeah. He's reminiscing. I met the old dude in the foreground. Oh, well, he's cool, too. That guy's kind of weedy looking. <laughs> I don't think I can respect him. He looks a little rickety. So I get a little confused here, because I remember the homeless guy being in the construction site, but you can't actually go in the construction site. There's nothing there. Nothing there, it's just a construction site. So I'm like, well, what the hell is the homeless guy? And I don't want to go any further because a scene triggers up here. But we'll yeah, see that in a second. Getting at the homeless guy pre scene. Mm hmm. So obviously you can't set this guy on fire. So the other option is. Mokoi is also a pagan demon and less creepy than Alp, so I pulled. That's debatable. Well. You know, that's it's up to your personal preference. Yeah, you see? You see? <laughs> He's defending himself with semantics. Demons oh, love semantics. A car's not guy like again. a car. Dr. Wily is not taking your shit. <laughs> He's all over the place. I never noticed that. Oh, man. Poltergeist in the background. I used one of those for a while in the first chapter. Pretty decent wind demons, but uh, yeah, but the early game. Mm -hmm. They're chapter one stuff. This is chapter two now. We've moved on. Neat thing is Moshibu obviously can heal you and shoot wind at people, which is a bonus. It's bad when you run into a group of like three Moshibus though, because then they're just like healing each other all over the place. Yeah, you gotta focus fire that. Alright, so I'm just I'm looking around trying to find the homeless person. Can't do it. Like, oh god, they're always supposed to be homeless people under bridges. What's going on? That's where I'd be if I was homeless. Yeah, 
<laughs> How, why would you ever say that dude's less creepy? Look at look. There's Doctor Wiley. <laughs> He's just trying to get more screen time. Yeah, there's a glowing thing. Got a life stone. All these extras, they just keep walking past the camera, hoping to get noticed. I cut that fight out. It was nothing new. There we go, max loyalty. Kind of creepy, but please don't ever stop playing with me. Little girls love to play. That's okay. All right, if you say so. Listen, better than the babies thing. <laughs> yes, that's true. All right, so we swap out to Mokoi because he's got an amazing attack. On top of looking like a zombie made out of fruit roll-ups. With a thong. <laughs> 